And guess what? Maybe I had a chip on my shoulder because his dad, Brian, had called me a liar when I said they were leaving KTM to go to Yamaha. He essentially called me a liar again when I told about the whole uh, bike claiming incident with Brendan Schofield. So you need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. What's up, Cooksy Mob? Hey, it's been a little bit. Yeah, I had a virus last week. Yes, the virus everyone's talking about. Whatever, it didn't hit me nearly as hard as it did a couple years ago when I was in the ICU, but I'm good. But I don't know about you guys, but I got motocross withdrawal right now. Like, what's going on? Um, so I started thinking about stuff, and nobody really does this. So I wanted to kind of take a look at some of the top guys and guys that had good seasons, a good 2023, a bad 2023. And let's take a look at what what they did and what's expected of them in 2024. And I'm going to start with the man, Hayden Deegan. Hayden Deegan had, in my opinion, and yes, I know Jet had a perfect season, but Hayden, it's like, okay, it's like somebody, if you enter a competition and it's about how much weight you can lose, somebody who's really fat always wins because somebody who's in pretty good shape and they just lose a few pounds, it, it just doesn't seem the same. And when you come in as a rookie, essentially you're the fat kid. And so you get to lose all this weight and create this whole new buzz because there's zero expectations. Jet had a lot of expectations. Nobody expected him to go undefeated. But he had a great season. But Hayden, in my mind, he lost more pounds than Jet this year. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Hayden Deegan. Hayden Deegan, and let's not forget, this kid two years ago was on a super mini. Two years ago, he was on a super mini. Uh, a year ago, he was at Loretta Lynn's. And then he was just getting onto the star Yamaha and doing all that stuff. And he had claim issues. But I watched him at Anaheim during the Futures where we weren't sure if he was going to race the Supercross season. We weren't sure if he was ready. Because keep in mind, not too long ago, he was on a Super Mini. If he had decided to sit out, I had said that was the right idea. Clearly, I was wrong because I didn't know this, was a, this kid was the special talent that he is. And guess what? Maybe I had a chip on my shoulder because his dad, Brian, had called me a liar when I said they were leaving KTM to go to Yamaha. He essentially called me a liar again when I told about the whole uh, bike claiming incident with Brendan Schofield. So I tried to do my best to be you know, an impartial journalist, but I'm also a human being. And maybe I did have a bit of a chip on my shoulder watching him in Anaheim, but he still looked like crap. Um, Daxton Benick, Julian Bomer, these guys handled it way better than he did. They rode better. And I'm not just talking about the main event, because in the main event at that race, the Futures race at Anaheim 2, Hayden did really well. He rode good. He tucked the front end and ended up, I think he ended up fourth, fourth or fifth, somewhere. But it doesn't really matter. But I just thought at that point, okay, why rush him? Let's take another year. But I didn't understand what was going behind the scenes where he was feeling all the pressure. Because the pressure was on him not to just win this race, but even if he won in non-dominant fashion, people were going to be critical of him. But I was watching him, you know, in the whoops and stuff like that. And he just, he did not look good. So when he turned pro, I thought it was a dumb move. I really thought, you know, look at a guy like Town Hawkins. He had a good race at Anaheim too. They turned him pro. Where is he now? It didn't go well. So you can never damage these kids or you rarely damage these kids by letting them sit out an extra year in amateurs. They probably make more money than they do as a pro. And then turning them pro when they're really ready. So Talon Hawkins went from a, you know, potential superstar to, and I love Phoenix Honda, but they're a B-level team. And now he's going to be on Phoenix Honda next year. And that's just, that's disappointing for a kid of his talent level and kind of the expectations that I had for him. I thought he was going to be a really good pro and he still might be, but it's an uphill battle. Once you get demoted from the major factory teams, it's hard to get another shot. You can but it's difficult. And that's what I was thinking about with Hayden Deegan. I was like, oh man, why would you risk it with Hayden? But he had something else. He has this dog in him. He has this fight. And when I talk about kids who've been given everything, sometimes they don't have that heart. Hayden clearly does. And so maybe that's why I judged him a little bit coming into the pro ranks, but man, he had a good season and instantly made an impact. I think he got fourth at his first race and instantly got up to the podium and then he's battling for wins. He did not get a actual Supercross win this year, but he was close and he was doing battle and he showed he will not be pushed around one iota. I mean, he got into it with his teammate. Jordan Smith, and that got really ugly to the point where there were rumors of fist fights in the pits. I don't know that any of that was true, but those are some of the things that I heard. And 
Good on Hayden Deegan for fighting back. And then he went outdoors and really stepped it up. He went from a guy who was battling for podiums to the one guy who could straight up beat Hunter on any given day. And he did. He straight hammered the field at Washougal. He crushed them and was in this thing until the very end. And yeah, I know Hunter had some issues and Hunter ended up the champion, but Hayden was coming and he was getting better every single week. And we saw the momentum creep in as he got closer and closer. And that's, that's, that's awesome. But where, where it's tough is this is his freshman season. Nobody expected anything. He's that 300 pound fat kid that dropped down to 180 um, and it looks good, but can you go from 180 to shredded? And where do you go from there? And that's where it gets tough. Now there's expectations coming into 2024. I mean, he did really good in Supercross. He almost won outdoors and then he won SMX. So anything less than a championship in the E or in whichever coast he races in and an outdoor championship and then to defend his SMX championship would be disappointing. But is that fair? No, but welcome to sophomore season and the way that we as fans expect, we expect this trajectory to keep going up. Sometimes when you get near the top, it starts to go like this a little bit. It doesn't necessarily. So it's going to be fun to see how he deals with his sophomore season and if he can become the guy. Because the greatest in this sport, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, Jet Lawrence, these guys, when they got to that point where they're expected to win, they delivered. That's when it becomes extremely difficult. Anyone can do it as an underdog, but can you do it as the favorite? Carrying all that off-season hype, carrying the weight of everything. It's tough. It's something very, very tough. Check out Complete Racing Solutions. You guys know Coach Rob. If you're in your off season and you just want to get in better shape, hit him up. He's got a program, mental, physical, you name it. He's got it. Epic Garage Designs. If you want to make your garage look badass, check it out. Get yourself a two-car garage floor, $17.95 for the tiles like the one you see right behind me. Make your garage look badass. You can install it yourself. Not that big of a deal. If you're in the Las Vegas area, we can do it for you. Uh, Ride strapped. You guys know ride strapped. Ride strapped is awesome. Some of the coolest goggles, especially in an election year. You might want to show your love for the country and, and just, just show ride straps some love. So, and then if you're going to ship anything, ship it with Precision Transport. Precision Transport is a trucking company that still values customer service. So, and then guys, don't forget, if you are needing a real estate agent anywhere in the world, country, I am with Berkshire Hathaway. And if you're not in Las Vegas area, if you're in the Las Vegas area, I'll work my ass off. I'll sell your house. I'll do open houses every weekend until we get that bad boy sold. But if you're not in that area, I can find you an agent anywhere in the world. Berkshire is a world, uh, worldwide company. They're huge. And I can get you set up with the proper people to help you sell, buy, or rent in your area. So while I'm talking about Hayden and his expectations and where people expect him to go, what does Hunter Lawrence, what, what lies ahead for him? What are his expectations? He's in a really, really weird spot right now where he's expected, you know, anytime you come up as the 250 champion, he's the, he's a supercross champion in a regional. And then he's also the outdoor national champion. He did not win the SMX series, which I've already talked about that quite a bit, but what does he do now on the 450 when his brother is the king? He's got Chase Sexton on a new bike. He's got Tomac making his comeback from, you know, an Achilles injury. It is a tough, tough field. And it's weird how we treat these 450 riders, in particular guys like him who are not really old, but they've been around for a little while. I think Hunter is going to be 23, 24, or something like that, which is such, it's so young in, in sports in general. But when you come into the 450 class, you get one year. He's experiencing his freshman year. You, a lot of these guys come in and they have this like weird speed when they come off the two fifties and it's almost like they come in and then they realize, okay, well maybe I got to pace it. I got to do something different to be here consistently. And some guys can adapt. Clearly his brother's there. His brother's already the guy to beat. That comes to how does he beat his brother? I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Is it okay? Is if Hunter gets second to his brother, do we consider that the same as a win because he's losing to his brother? I don't know. That's, that's an interesting point. Is Honda going to keep him around if he's just riding around in second behind Hunter? I would think so. So, I mean, what do you do? You got the two best guys and they're brothers. Um, is Jet going to maybe lay up once or twice to let his brother win? 
uh, he's shown a propensity to help out his brother. I know how close they are as a family, and they don't want all the glory going to one one kid. But you can't really fix races. Um, and he already got a warning for that when he let you know Roxon by. But that wasn't the beginning of it. The beginning of it was back at Paula the year before when Jet had already wrapped up the outdoor title, and Hunter was trying to get second place overall. Their dad got really mad and, and he, they wanted they wanted Jet to let Hunter win to get second in the standings. So the AMA is watching that. They're not going to go for any of that. Any of that funny business is something to kind of watch for. But Hunter in 2024, it's going to be interesting. Um, my buddy, Coach Rob. Coach Rob seems to think that Hunter's a stronger, uh, more mentally tough athlete. I don't, I don't agree with him. I think that's a crazy take, but he believes it and he might be right. Uh, I don't think so, but I'm excited to see where Hunter can go and how he deals with being, you know, a freshman in this 450 class. And can he do it? And this is, keep in mind, both Lawrence brothers, neither of them have, have ran a full Supercross and a full outdoor season and the SMX rounds. That's tough. Well, obviously last year was the first one for everyone because of SMX, but the full Supercross and the full outdoor in that 450 class is brutal. It's brutal. There's no days off. There's no, there's no, you know, hey, wait till we get to the East region. You can take a break. You can heal nagging injuries, that type of stuff. That doesn't happen. You go a full 17 rounds of Supercross and then you go right into outdoors and it's tough. Can they both stay healthy? Can they both manage it mentally? I think they can, but that's something to watch. So anyway, guys, I'm going to be dropping these and just kind of taking a look at different guys. I want to look at Levi Kitchen. I want to look at, you know, Max Voland and talk about these guys and where they're at in their careers and what's expected of them by their employers, what's expected of them by fans. And then also, don't forget, guys, it's not the complete off season. We got World Supercross at November 4th. Uh, there's two rounds of World Supercross left. And speaking of Hayden Deegan, how cool would it be if Hayden Deegan stepped up and just showed up at one of these World Supercross rounds? I think it'd be a brilliant move. And it would just, it would break the internet as, as almost everything they do. Um, but I would love to see Hayden Deegan jump over there. And we know Star allows it. Um, Eli went over there last year, won the first round. And, you know, so I, I don't think Star's opposed to it as, as some of the other, other manufacturers are. I think they'll let their guys go compete in this series. And I think that's a lot of the reason they got Cooper Webb on that 450. But yeah, how cool would that be? So, all right, guys, look for these videos. And like I said, I'm going to be detailing um, a lot of kind of, you know, how guys 23 season went and what's expected of them in 24. And let me know your thoughts. Thanks, guys. Remember, subscribe and I'll catch you later.